Hello and welcome to the Knit Girls. This is episode 375. I'm Laura, also known as Lala. I am Leslie, also known as You Don't Call Me Less. It is Monday, December the 18th. It um, is. We've been gone for two weeks unintentionally because there's been a plague on both our houses. <laughs> we must have done something very Shakespearean. Yeah. Um, and I was just in no place to. I, we could have recorded last week, but you wouldn't have heard a single thing I said. So, um, and every two minutes would have been interrupted with a lovely cough, coughing fit. Every single teacher at my school, but like four, were out throughout the last two weeks. Like, have missed a day due yeah. to pestilence and disease. It's a uh, crazy right now, right here. Yeah, but we're supposed to get snow on Christmas. Did you know that? The guy at the auto shop told me this morning, and I'm going to be gone, so I'm going to miss the snow. It's supposed to hit Knoxville the day I'm driving back, mm. so that'll be fun. I'm not holding out my holding my breath for that because in the past week it's been 65, mm -hmm. it's been 20, yeah, it's been <laughs> 45. Um, <laughs> right now, I think it's in the mid 50s. Yeah, so I'm not. It's like drizzly outside. Yeah. We'll see. Maybe it'll snow, maybe it won't. I'm kind of hoping it doesn't because I don't want to drive in it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Because those of you who live in areas that get snow, like, those of that you is who not live in areas <laughs> that possess snow plows. Yes. But the South does not. So it becomes, um, at least where we are in the South, there are no snow plows. I never saw one until I moved to New Jersey. So um, they put this, like, brine on the road, like, it's a salt brine they pre-treat the roads but then they don't actually have like the salt trucks that go through they do occasionally have gravel yes they put down sand too and gravel that's true like on overpasses i'd forgotten about that anyway um i am knitting i'm just gonna go go for you it. get no say in the directionality of what how things are happening today so it's like every other day yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm knitting on a pair of socks. This is the first one. This is Aim to Misbehave. Um, these are my purse knitting socks. They've been hanging out in my fat squirrel pigeon bag. And the yarn is Aim to Misbehave. It's by Turtle Pearl, which is a Canadian dyer. Mm -hmm. It's got a cool repetition of stripes. Like, it's not just... Yeah. Um, it kind of reminds me of, like, athletic stripes. Does that make sense? Yeah. To some degree. So it's got, like, a, a bright green that's throughout. And then this is a navy. I think it's showing pretty clear and then there's a double set of yellow stripes and i'm doing wendy johnson's toe up socks with a gusset you're so adventurous <laughs> shut your face <laughs> i am and i have completed the gusset actually i was just counting uh i knit on it a bunch during a candle class we went to yesterday so the gusset is done and i need to start the heel but i'm gonna wait till after I'm in, like, the weird spot on yeah. my two things of knitting. I'm on a gusset for this, and I'm on a gusset for my next thing as well. So this gusset is done. I just need to knit around, and then I can do, um, turn the heel and then just zip up. And then I'm probably going to cast on my um, Desert Vista Dye Work socks. So the second one of this will take a back seat, because I need to finish that pair. Have you even started that pair? Mm -mm. Oh. Because I was waiting on these needles. But you know what? I have um, I have the new needles. That, that is not a, the only size zero needle you possess. No. That's true. But my other one that I typically use for socks is on the um, fingerless mitts the that I had things. started. Uh -huh. yeah. But I have another pair of zeros. I got those new Addy needles that kind of are oh, like yeah, double like points. Oh, yeah, like the weird bendy things. They're not flip sticks. They're flip something. They're like a DPN that's got a, a cable in the middle of it, so they bend so that they they kind of function as DPNs because you can bend them so they look square. It's kind of like 8-inch circulars that are used to... Instead of doing, okay, so it's like using two circular needles, but then you're using a third to knit across versus... I think we probably, you're now more confused than before <laughs> you knew these existed. I'll cast on with them and then I'll show yeah. them next week. How about that? I use them for the front, like the ribbing on the glove, and then I f switched over to, um, because my glove, like the, it was wider than the needles were. So I was losing stitches constantly. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Because they're really meant for, like, eight inches, I would say, total circumference or less. 
Um, so anyway, I'm going to play with those some more. But these are on my Chaigu, not hi hi I totally said hi hi multiple times last week. Oh. So I'm sorry if I confused you. These are Chaigu. They have a red cord. Um, the interchangeables. And I did link those on the Ravelry um, part of last week's episode. So if you're interested in that. These are zeros, but they do go down to, I think, triple zeros. And up to one and a halves. So they're like a mini interchangeable set. And I think I, they were like $40 or $50 for the set. So that is the first thing that I'm working on. The second thing I'm working on is a pair of marshmallow mitts. This is a pattern from Tin Can Knits. And I have, um, I finished the first one except for the thumb. So let me find where the, yeah, these are the right hand. This is the right hand one. So this is hand spun. And it's got, if I flip it up, I don't know if y'all can see, but there is, where did it go? There's a buttonhole. There it is. There's a buttonhole right there. Sorry. <laughs> the dogs I, are going crazy because UPS is here. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. I heard him pull up. I'm so in tuned right now to UPS because Pearl goes crazy. Like, she hates the UPS guy and the mailman. And she's, like, happy with everyone else in the existence of the world for the most part. Anyway, there's a buttonhole right here. So when you flip this down, it buttons. Once I purchase a button, I'm thinking a wooden button for this. And it's like a decorative feature. And then on the, uh, the left-hand side, it's flipped so they're mirror images. mirrored. Um, and these are being knit out of hand spun. So I'm trying to knit with my hand spun a little bit more. This was a knit spin farm bat that I actually three plied. I spun it woolen and then three plied it. So it's got a nice like squishy fabric. Mm -hmm. And I worked on the other one today as well. And now it's ready for the thumb gusset to begin. So I need to separate that out with stitch markers. I like um, this for this project because every once in a while it's got this like sari silk. Mm -hmm. So it's not so much sari silk that it's like crazy. Just little pops. Yeah. So there's some on here. So I think that's a perfect mitt pattern for the hand spun. I'm really loving it. And I have this much left. So I've got plenty left to finish these mitts. And it's like a worsted weight hand spun. And it is living in my David the Gnome bag from Fat Squirrel. Aww. He's so cute. So, and I'm knitting those on signatures that I'm magic looping. I think they're size six actually, which is a large size for me. Which means that, the, yeah, I think the greens are size six. Yep, four millimeter, size six. So it's actually kind of a quick project. I started this, um, this one at the candle thing. No, at the, um, where did I go this morning to get my oil changed? Mm. And then I started playing on the Twitters. So, but it, it went pretty fast. I did mess up, not really mess up, but I got off somewhere where I did two uh, rows of stocking. Out. Yeah. Instead of garter. But when it's like all squished down. It's really hard to see. It'll be fine. Somehow I got off on half a side. I don't know. I missed my little beginner of the row. So those are the two things that I have on the needles right now. What do you have on the needles, my friend? I'm counting. Can you? Oh, can I talk more? Of course I can talk more. So I have another project that I'm going to start and I will show it to you because it is in my bag as well. And I cannot remember where this bag came from. It was part of a kit that came with rainbow stitch markers. I think White Birch did a kit with this. And I have some um, cool blue yarn that I got from Fiber Seed. It's worsted that I hand wound. And I can't remember why I hand wound it now. And that's going to become the Cherry Pop Hat by Thea Coleman. So that is what's going to be next on my needles. And I have a pair of fives and sixes because I always have to go down a needle size. Otherwise things come out giants. I always have to go up at least one needle size. Otherwise they come out bulletproof. <laughs> We're opposites, yo. In so many ways. 
So that's living in this little rainbow bag. And hopefully, I brought this to candle making as well to cast on, but I didn't get there. But that's what's next on my needles. I might cast that on. I might look up the numbers and cast that on. Well, you talk. Or maybe not. Maybe I'll just get the one round of this done. I don't know what I'm going to do. What am I going to do for the rest of this podcast? Talk. <laughs> no, I have other things. Like, I need to knit on something. I'll get through this round. Yeah, because you're in a weird place on that, you said. I'm on the weird... I'm in a weird... Because I'm on, like, the thumb gusset on the marshmallow mitts. I have to, like, separate out for that. Like, add my markers. I could totally do that you're while we talk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I've got a couple of things on the needles. Um, I swatched for Cypress. I showed you that last week. This is a Jared Flood pattern. It calls for four stitches to the inch, and the fabric that I like that I swatched is a three and a half stitches to the inch. So it won't require a ton of adjustments. Um, and that's the yarn from... This is um, Queensland Kathmandu Erin, okay. which I got from Eat Sleep Knit. It's really pretty. Yeah, I like it a lot. And then I swatched for this sort of swingy open lace vest made out of a bulky... Um, and I swatched for that out of Turbine. Which is this. Yeah, which oh, is uh, Harrisville Designs. That's also this. Uh, it's like a water spun. Yeah. So. I need to send this to its intended recipient. Yeah. So I swatched. And I'm, I'm trying to figure out. I'm so sorry that my dogs are going bananas. <laughs> Michael and I order everything online rather than shopping in stores, and so we have to do something nice for our delivery people. <laughs> um, <laughs> because your dogs go crazy at them, or just in general? Because they're, they're constantly stopping, like, every day to um, deliver something. And yeah, that's their job, but still. No, that's can be nice totally to, nice. Oh, okay, here's the swatch. So I swatched on size 13s, which is what it called for. Um, and mm. it's giving me three and a half stitches to the what inch. What are you supposed to get? Um, I think two stitches. I mean, it's giving it me, looks, let me see three stitches to the inch. I wish that I had gone up with this, and I knit this, I think, on 13s, and I wish I had gone up yeah, to Yeah, it calls for eight stitches to four inches, so two stitches to the inch. So I'm going to have to go up at least one needle size. I would go up to 15s. Do you have 15s? Yeah. Um, I ordered 13s, 15s, and 17s from Webs. Oh, that's what that was. Has your Webs order come It yet? just came in today. Okay. I, I haven't even gotten a shipping notification on mine. Hmm. Well. Yeah, I would go up. I'm going to have to. And no. I thought I probably would when I was knitting the swatch because it was really tight. Yeah, it's real tight. So, um. It's got a nice, um, rounded stitch definition for the lace, though. Yeah. So I'm going to re-swatch with this. Um, or I, I could bring over my leftover gray if you want. It's all right. I ordered extra knowing that I would need uh, swatch to swatch. Times. So those are things that I that are like upcoming and then I'm casting <coughs> on with um, Ooh, excuse me, y'all. Turtle Pearl's trench coat colorway which is kind of Burberry-ish. Yeah it used to be called Burberry and now it is called trench coat. And um, I'm just going to do some simple fingerless mitts. I, I didn't even look up a pattern. I just cast on 64 stitches and I'm just going to do some ribbing and then I'll look up a pattern <laughs> and go from there. There you go. Um, okay so the main thing that I've worked on this week, well these two weeks, has been my Shisui shrug. Shisui? Yeah that's right. I always want to swat, switch those two um, syllables and, and say... Ooey shay. <laughs> I want to say swooshy or something, but oh. anyway. It's, it's getting big! Yeah, it's... I love it. Huge. I'm into the second ball of both colors. Um, I did separate for the sleeves. Right there. Oh, yeah. So, if we set it up here... You can see. Yeah. The sleeves huh. start here, and then you come back later, and you knit down about four inches or something like that. Um, so, I've got... Are you going to want to add that much? I'm going to, yeah, because I want them to be You want them to be long? Mm -hmm. um, Even though you're always hot? 
Yeah, but this is such a light fabric. Because it's knit on such big needles. Yeah, it is. So, um, anyhow, I, so I marked it here with a little stitch marker when I split mm -hmm. the, um, for the sleeves. And I have to have eight section, eight of these, um, one into five repeats. So this is one, two, three, and I just did the fourth. So you're halfway there. Each one is um, thirty, no, sixteen rows. So sixteen times forty-eight. Sixteen times four. So four, six, Way times four, twenty-four, forty-eight. 48. Oh my God, I hate Sixty-four. Wait, I don't know. Eight times two is sixteen. So mm -hmm. eight times eight is 64. So yeah, 64-ish yeah. more rows. And then you do an I-cord bind off all along the bottom, which will be annoying, but. Um, I think if you put on like Beast Master, yeah. you'll just, it might be super tight, but you'll get through it. <laughs> and then you come back and do the sleeves, but the sleeves are pretty quick because they're in the round. So, and that's a lot quicker. I feel like it's a lot quicker. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, each row has something like 500 stitches. It's kind of insane. Mm-hmm. I'm pulling up my pattern, sorry. Because um, while I have a lot of things memorized, I do not have the numbers for the heel turn memorized. So um, I've been knitting on this a lot as I've been on random conference calls and getting woken up at 3 in the morning. And um, I am so glad that I got off of call on Thursday because that was the worst of my illness. Um, that makes it sound way more serious than it is, but than it was. I'm fine now. I still have a little bit of um, smelly cat voice, um, <laughs> which is an old friend's Phoebe reference. Um, but for the most part, I, I'm over it. But yeah, on Thursday. Usually the person who's coming off of call for work has like um, a recap of everything that happened. They go over it with the team so that the next person that's going on call can sort of get a, you know, very in-depth understanding of what's been happening so they know what to look for. And I, I am to my manager and I was like, I can't talk. So here's everything typed up. I, I can't do this. And she's like, okay, go home, you know, go to bed. So, and I'm off all this week, and then um, our offices are closed on Monday on Christmas, and then I am off on Tuesday as well, and then I work Wednesday through Friday, and then I took the first week of the year off as well, because I had I have to burn all this time off, mm -hmm. or I just lose it. Yeah. So, that's not going to happen. <laughs> I've never worked in a job where that's been the case. Yeah. Well, you've been a teacher all your life, yeah. so. Um, <laughs> well, all your adult life. That's true. So that's all I got. Um, I do have a finished object, though, if you're Yay! still counting. I'm not counting, but I am working on my heel, so go for it. So my finished object is a pair of socks. Yay! These are the Simply Sock Yarn, um, Simply Sock post self-striping yarn in holiday florida that's their cordial blend they have a new blend now yeah um are those for you or someone else for me just because that was the default size that <laughs> you knit them yeah <laughs> good uh you don't knit enough socks for you you knit a lot of socks for other I people i don't know that that's true um but they turned out pretty identical actually even with heel flaps and toes they turned out pretty identical so I'm, I'm happy with them. Um, they do need a bath. I just finished kitchenering the toe of number two about an hour ago. So Good for you. I, I finished up the toe while Laura and I were watching Beastmaster <laughs> on Netflix. <laughs> which is like... Which is like our super guilty pleasure. Because it's, it's kind so of like good. American Gladiators, but it's not one-on-one. -on -one. It's like an um, obstacle course. It's an obstacle course, yeah. yeah. It's like American Ninja Warrior. Yeah, Sort of. I guess. Um, but it's a Netflix production. <laughs> it's pretty terrible. It is. It is. <laughs> like... I liked the announcers that they had last Terry time. Terry Crews. Yeah. Yeah. And then a chick. I can't remember the chick's name. But now they've got some MTV guy. I did look up 
Oh, was. was that who he was? So he does stuff for MTV. And Tiki Barber. And Tiki Barber. <laughs> Who's actually pretty funny. So I like I Tiki Barber, yeah. I can't complain, but they have, like, other countries involved, and so... Yes. Um... And Laura and I, sitting on the sofa, eating chocolate and drinking soda, are like, you can make that jump. Come on, punk. It's only 10 feet. Go yeah. for it. You can totally do that. So. Um, Why are you falling? Yeah. It's, 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 um, it's been a fun, ridiculous, silly thing to watch, so. <laughs> Yes, but it does. It's good for knitting because you knit really fast. Yeah. You get super invested <laughs> in whether these people are going to fall or how successful they're going to be. So, it is what it is. Yeah. I have some finished objects as well. Sweet. Um, I finished one thing for each of the nieces. So, Emily, who's my sister-in-law, if Alice and Julia are with you and you're watching this before Christmas, you should wait till after they leave to finish this. So... <clears throat> Um, I knit, Alice asked me for a shawl for Christmas, so I knit her, um, I went into my hand spun stash, and I had spun a unicorn bat from Knit Spin Farm that I wanted to knit into something for one of the girls, um, because it's, it is purple and has a lot of glitter in it, and I thought they would really like that, and I was specifically told to knit purple and pink. This has purple in it and glitter, so I think I'm still okay. This is the hand spun boomerang pattern. Mm. Um, Alice is only six years old. Like, she just turned six. She's a little thing. She's itty bitty. Well, her attitude's pretty big, from what I hear. <laughs> she does. She's sassy. Uh, a yeah, lot. that's what I mean. I don't mean she's a brat. I mean, I hear she's very sassy. I love the sassy. I do love a sassy person. Especially when they do not belong to me. <laughs> and you're not responsible for their um, upbringing discipline. at all? Yes. <laughs> no. My sister in law and brother do a good job with their kids. So, um, this is the hand spun boomerang. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. And I had 200 yards of like a worsted weight. So I just knit this up. I think I knit this up. I did knit all of this up in a day, um, while watching Great British Bake Off. So it was a super fast knit. Definitely. I would knit it again for like a real person size with like eight ounces versus four ounces. Um, and this might have been, like, a three-ounce bed. I can't even remember. I think it's good size for her, though. But for her, I think it'll be perfect. And she can wear it like a scarf, too, because mm -hmm. it's not super wide. Um, and it's got teals and purples and silvers and a lot of glitter. And Joanna does a great job with her bats. She just opened another um, club that's, like, ocean mm -hmm. adventure. So Leslie and I joined. Um, thank God it was still open. Like, I missed the sign-ups by two days. And she still had spots available. Oh, wow. Because Instagram is driving me crazy. Like, Instagram is like, oh, you love following these people. And you love seeing them. And even though you get on here all the time, I'm still not going to show you something for two weeks later. Mm. Enjoy. Because I get on Instagram every day. So there's no reason for it not to show me th something for two weeks. Like, it's driving me nuts. And then they'll show me every post. So I... um have a bunch of Funko Pops and I follow Funko on Instagram so they were doing like an advent calendar which I'm not gonna get but because it's all like their little Freddy dude they're like mascot dude whatever mm -hmm. um and so it posted like the first 15 days in a row for me oh. Instagram did and I was like what 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 are you doing anyway we made it into Joanna's bat club thank goodness um, for this next round. I was worried when I saw that I missed her post by two days. And I know that I can, like, set notifications for people, but I don't want to set notifications for people. I'm not that into Instagram. So this is the handspun boomerang. And then Julia, a little birdie, told me, where's her handspun socks? Not handspun. Her hand knit socks that I made her tube socks a couple years ago that were Elsa. Um, it was a mustache yarn. So I knit her some new tube socks. So these are Dashing Docks. Um, this yarn might be older than Julia. It, it like striped, which I love. Yeah. Um, it reminds me of like the color of the bumble from, if it had white in it, it would be like bumble colored from Rudolph. Um, what I did was I cast on using Judy's Magic Cast On. I did eight on each needle, so 16 total. I increased up to 48 total stitches, and I knit these on size one needles, and I, um, these carbons. These are a sport weight? 
yeah, this is a support weight. And so I just zipped up, knit till it reached eight and a half inches, and then did two inches of ribbing at the top. So they're a little bit more than 10 inches long. But I like the tube socks for little ones because um, they can continue wearing them for long periods of time. So, and I love how this yarn, now I'm sad that I don't have more of this yarn, but for me sized, it would not stripe like it did for her. Yeah. That's a total That's all gauge, about gauge thing. Yeah. So, and width. So I'm pretty happy with how those turned out too. So that package was supposed to be mailed today, but I was waiting on something to arrive for it, which just got here as I was leaving to come to your house. So it'll have to go out tomorrow and hopefully it will get there in time. Um, so those are the two things that I finished. Correct? Did I finish anything else? I don't think I did. I don't know. Nope, that's it. I also have been spinning. I've been working on an advent calendar um, that I got from Barber Black Sheep, which is, I think she's in Wales or the UK. And every day is a new fiber. Yeah. Um, and it's based off of a different m mythical creature. So December 4th was. Um, selkie based and she made um a wool like the wool blend was eider wool which i've gotten before from um southern cross that's a down wool it's a it? german coastal sheep and um sea cell so that one is this one i believe spin up and I got around 25 yards from each of these. Do you want to feel all my walls? And then December 5th was Moomin. They're Swedish speaking Finnish characters from modern fantasy. And um, it is BFL bamboo and alpaca. And I think that was this white one. Yeah, BFL, Merino, Bamboo, and Alpaca. And then six was Centaur. And it was white-faced woodland in this orange, which was, um, it's a meat sheep, but it was a really interesting wool to spin. All these were spun short forward draft worsted. So that was that one. This one bulked up a little bit, so it's heavier. I think that's only 20, ounce, uh, 20 yards. Um, December 3rd was Unicorn. That was this purple. And that's Paul Worth. Are you re- Oh, are you making them into little things for me? And then Jabberwock was a brown BFL. Died in a forest green. That one plumped up for me, too. Also, when I wound that, I did something wrong. Yeah. <laughs> on my little, I wound 24 yards poorly on my Nasta pin. This unicorn one's really stretchy. Yeah. I like Polworth. It's one of my faves. So this is a brown BFL. And then the last one, and I have some that I still need to apply, are Valerie, Valerie? Valkyrie. Valkyrie. There you go. And this is a BFL, Llama, and Rose Fiber. To that sheen that's like the tensile that comes from the roses because really that's tensile even though people are like it's rose fiber no it's tensile i mean it's tensile made from roses you can't see my air quotations okay. it's still a tensile so yeah so i have um eight of the first what day is it? 17 done? Today's the 18th. 18th. So I have 10 to go. Um, and I do have a couple spun that I haven't plied. But I started spinning um, something for our Patreon giveaway today. Because that got priority. So this is whoosh, some Hello Yarn Ramboulet in the Breathless Air colorway. This is going to be like a worsted to bulky. I'm spinning the second one. 
And my bestie over here was spinning this on my Lendrum, and I was spinning those on the Lendrum too. She made me um, sheepskin sheep covers for my treadles. So it's really nice and soft when I go to treadle. But also I can't put dirty shoes on there because that would be terrible. So, because they're white. Should I not make shoes. you treadle covers then? No, I want treadle covers. I just need to remember to take off shoes. Oh. I always spin in my socks anyways. But sometimes when I'm wearing my Uggs, I spin in those. Hmm. But now I'm not going to because I don't want to get my treadle covers dirty because they're so nice. But they're like spinning in my Uggs because it's the sheepskin. Hmm. So my Uggs are like 10 years old. Yeah, they are. They're actually 12 years old. <laughs> So so they've lost that bouncy. And I keep, because I wear my Uggs all winter long, and I keep thinking I should buy a new pair, because they are getting pretty raggedy looking. But I just, I think they used to be blue, and now they're more like a gray. <laughs> That's true. I have a green pair, too. So this is Breathless Air, so I'm just going to spin, finish spinning the other half of this. I posted a picture of Instagram of me spinning it and Pearl going like, Unimpressed Pearl. <laughs> yes. Unimpressed Pearl was sleeping because she came in and saw me spinning and she looked at me and laid down and went <sighs> <laughs> like that dog like sigh growl like ugh. And this was Fiber Club for March. So last year. So I'm excited for it to finish that up and then I'll wash it and show it to you guys and then I'll go on to its new home. Um, podcast next week will... Oh, I forgot something that I was knitting on. Oh, my yeah. kids. I knit a little red scarf, y'all. Look at my little mini scarf. She knit a little strip of garter. No, it's not even garter. It's... It's, um... It's not garter. It's one by one rib. Get, get my little red strip right. Wow. Because I wanted to, um... So we were sent kits to review... Yes. From Wicked Chicken Yarns. Which is Rebecca Mother F and Danger. <laughs> her company that she has with one of her friends. Yeah. And um, it's got everything you need to make these, like, three things. So I'm making the snowman. And I wanted to check my gauge before I knit the actual thing and had, like, stuffing coming out. So I decided to knit the scarf first because that made sense to me. Um, so it has everything you need in it except for needles. So I pulled out my Chagu interchangeables and I got out the double or triple zeros so I could knit these where I could stuff them and stuffing wouldn't be coming through. Um, so they're supposed to be three inches tall finished. I think mine will be a little bit smaller. But I started knitting on the snowman. And like the safety eyes are in there. Um, stuffing. The stuffing, the wool, the pattern. Um, yeah. Yeah. And she says you need size one needles, but... Laura knows her own gauge. <laughs> yeah, if I knit with size one, that stuffing would be coming out. So, and, um, yeah, that's all there is to it. So I started working on those, and I knit a little scarf. Yeah. And that is Wicked Chicken's yarn. Yeah, and they're getting ready to do another kit. Oh, I have the pattern in here, too. Yeah, it's um, Rebecca Slime. Danger and Chris O'Keefe. So if you went to the first SSK, yeah. Rebecca and her friend Chris first also came second, I um, think. along. Um, yeah. Rebecca taught at the first one, and then she just came to the second one. Yeah, I think you're right. Cool. I think it was the second one that Chris came to. Um, so there are stitch markers and... There's the stuffing and the yarn. And so she mm -hmm. sent two kits, so we're going to give this one away. Um, it's got a little cute picture on the back with all the... Everybody's yeah. on the tree. So Super cute kit. We'll have a prompt in the thread. Um, we'll do a giveaway thread for this this week. Um, it is a little late for you to get them knit in time for Christmas this year, but you can always knit them in time for Christmas next year. So... Um, and I love that everything's in here. The safety eyes, the stuff, oh, yeah. everything. Um, she also has an Etsy shop where she sells this stuff, which is wickedchickensyarn.com. And then from there, it'll take you to the Etsy shop. So, And she's going to have more um, themed kits out soon. So, um, What have you been reading? Um, I reread a couple of books that I liked. Um, just because when I'm on call, I want to be able to fall asleep 
quickly mm-hmm. because I don't get to stay asleep for very long. I understand. <laughs> Historically. Um, but I'm on <clears throat> the fourth no, fifth book in the Dowser series. Oh, that's that cupcake one? Mm-hmm. And it's actually got two offshoot series from it. And at oh. the end of every book, it tells you what the next book in the reading order is. Oh. So you can, you know... That's a lot of things to keep up with. So, um... I read the first one after your recommendation. Yeah. And um, I might read a second one. It's, I mean... It's fluff. Yeah, I mean, it's nothing that's going to change your life, but... It's interesting. Um, I'm on the fifth one. It's pretty good. And I'm listening to The Way of Kings, which is the first in a ten book series. Only three of them are out right now by Brandon Sanderson. And it is 50 hours long. And I finally got over the hump of the beginning where you're introduced to a bunch of different characters and uh-huh. you really don't know what's happening. And um even, this is not the first time I've listened to it. I'm re-listening to it because the third one came out. Oh. Um, and I can't remember really anything. What's going on. Yeah. yeah. So um, I can't remember what the second book is. The third one is called Oathbringer. So. Okay. I um, read kind of a bunch of short stories. So there is a short story anthology that came out called Amid the Winter Snow. And it had a Grace Draven short story. Yeah, and you the, mentioned uh, that. Um, Harrison. Harrison. I almost said Coleman. Yeah. She does not write. <laughs> um, which was a different kind of setting um, than what the uh, typically has. So it's Elder Races, but it's a little bit different. And then there was um, someone that I'd never heard of before. Um, well, two people I'd never heard of. And one I really, really enjoyed. So I went to get her neck, her like first book mm-hmm. in the series because the short story kind of like finished off the series because um, it's all like Christmas themed and uh, it's like $10 on Kindle Oof. so per book and there's three it's a trilogy so um, I then checked my local library who did not have it and then I checked Wheezy's local library because I might have access to my father's library card and they did not have it so I requested it and then, um, but they actually had the print version in the actual library. So I uh, tried to put it on hold, but all his passwords that I know for him did not work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so, and he couldn't remember what his password was either. Um, so he went in and got it and the lady behind the counter, because my father typically reads like Michael Crichton, Stuart Woods, um, Jeffrey, um, was it? Danvers, Tom Clancy, like that kind of stuff. James Patterson, um, not his kid stuff, his adult stuff. And so, um, it was not his normal paranormal fantasy romance. It's not typically what he gets out. So the librarian was like, oh. And then he had to relay the story that his daughter's a cheapskate. His, his daughter's a cheapskate, who also happens to be a librarian. <laughs> but I don't think it's a cheapskate thing. I think, um, If it's available from the library, you should definitely get it from your library because you're, if, especially if you're one of those people paying the taxes for that library, you're helping to fund that library and the libraries depend on things like circulation numbers at Mm -hmm. the end of the year, um, to get things like funding. So also you're a cheapskate. I am a cheapskate. It's like $30 for three books. And you know what's funny about that is I'm a cheapskate when it comes to books for me. Yeah. But I just spent like $150 on books for my library. Yeah. Um, that I personally an bought. That and I didn't even blink. I was like, oh, you know, or... these are all books um, that the library doesn't have that I think we need in the collection that my library can't afford to get. So I'm just going to buy them. Yeah. So um, I got a bunch of like, I'm not your perfect Mexican daughter. Um Dear Martin, so I purchased a bunch of that stuff because I know the kids are going to be super excited when they get back from holidays um, and they're there. So I didn't blink an eye at that, but like me buying books for me, I'm like, (laughs) and then uh, Devin Monk, who does the, um, a series that takes place like in Oregon where it's a town that has like magic where, um, gods and goddesses go on like vacation we've talked about this mm-hmm. ordinary magic series 
Um, she had a new short story called Paper Stars that came out, so I read that too, and all were enjoyable. And then um, one of the authors that I met at NCTE, um, he was signing Flying Lessons, which is a short story anthology that was produced by um, Weenie Diverse Books. And there were like 10 authors that they had set up that were signing, probably not that many, but he stuck out in my mind because he was so awesome and super funny. And we we're talking about, I was wearing this shirt actually, and we we're talking about Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. And he said for Halloween, he went as like Harry Potter after, after the party happens, like hung over Harry <laughs> Potter. And it just made me laugh. So like he's describing the outfit that he wore and it was just hilarious. And, um, I've looked at his books before, but to be honest, there's so many books out there for teens and middle grades that are like fairy tale based mm -hmm. that um, I had not picked these up to read yet. So I went to my local library <laughs> and I got them on audio, like to download to my phone. I got the first one and is the school of good and evil. And it, he's on like the seventh book now, like they're super popular. Um, they would be a good choice for kids who like, um, like the Descendants series, but there was just, when they came out, I had just read like four books in a row that were fairy tale based. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't in the right mindset, but now I am. Um, these have like a little bit of a twist to them. So that's what I'm listening to right now is the school for good and evil. The first one. So that is what is happening and watching Beastmaster a whole bunch as you do. <laughs> I've been watching holiday films too. Like I watched Rudolph the other day and some other good ones, but the year without a Santa Claus is one of my personal favorites. I'm not a holiday film enthusiast. That's very sad. Why? Because there's some great holiday films out there. Oh. Like I love, um, Oh, what's home alone is a classic. How can you not love Home Alone? Macaulay Culkin at his pinnacle of acting career. Yeah. Um, no, I watched Christmas in Connecticut, which is another good one. My favorite Macaulay Culkin film is Saved. I don't know that film. It's kind of like your typical like teen coming of age story, but uh -huh. it's about this snotty girl who's been saved by Jesus and she tries to convert everyone. It's got Mandy Moore. It's hilarious. How do I not know this film? <clears throat> um, anyway. My least favorite Macaulay Culkin film is, what is it, My Girl, where, mm -hmm. spoiler, he dies at the end, like from Bee Stings or something. And it just freaked me out. Thomas J. That's his name in the film. Uh, I have no idea. I watched it like a month ago. Oh, okay. Um, I, I can't <clears throat> name... Okay, Richie Rich. What other Macaulay Culkin films can you name just off the top of He was of in, like, head? The Good Son or something? Where yeah, he was, where he was, like, evil and yeah. tried to kill people. That's it. That's all I got. That's all you got? Mm -hmm. That's all I got, too. I feel like he's been in a couple more, like, indie ones as an mm -hmm. adult, but I can't remember what they are. In my head, I just had a picture of him in Jurassic Park and, like, the animals eating him, but I know that's not true. <laughs> but it would be a cool film. Okay. Anyway... Um, what else? So, I have your Christmas present. Another one for you. Can we wait until the end? Yes. Okay. So, SSK Lottery that we did the random number generator on Friday and um, sent out notifications one way or the other. You should have received a notification. I double checked that they were all sent. So, if you haven't gotten it, please check your spam folder. But if you've checked your spam folder and it's not there, please email Did me. Did we ever talk about our other teacher? Um, no, I don't think we have. So we've already talked about we're going to have Isabel Kramer. Mm -hmm. We're going to have, um, I want to say Edith, that's not right. Jazz Esther. Turtle. Esther. Rogers. Um, Jazz Turtle. Uh, Kirsten Kapoor. Uh-huh. Um, Laura Nelkin. Laura Nelkin. So those um, were the ones we've already talked about. And then we also convinced our friend Gail. Of Gail's art, and she's going to teach a dyeing class. Yeah, sock blanks and stencil dyeing and that sort of thing. Um, so we're actually going to have five teachers this year. Yeah. So that's going to be, be really cool. Um, 
but we did send out notifications uh, for those that got in immediately and then we sent notifications to everyone else that they were on the wait list. Um, I've already got emails from three or four people who said, you know, um, since the signups, I've realized I can't go. So we, we're already have dropouts. Yeah. We and that happens every year, and that's yeah. fine. Like we, I would say we always have like fifty dropouts. You know, life life happens, that. and that's that's totally fine. So and people think they can get off work, and then something changes, and they right. can't, or you know. So those of you on the wait list, you know, be Don't patient, despair. and we will do our very best to redraw names as soon as possible. Um, the deadline date for the first payment is the first part of January. So once that date passes, we will pull a bunch of new yep. folks. So, um, excellent. What else? We did go to a candle making class. We did. We took a candle making place, uh, class at a local, it's not even local. It's like 45 minutes away in Memphis, um, shop. And we have to go back and pick up our candles yeah. at sometime this week. It was, um, on soy candle making. Yeah. It was interesting. Um, it was more geared towards people who want to just go in the shop and say they make candles versus people who want to do it as an income at home. Does right. that make sense? It was, or just do it at home. It was a much more, like, a lot of things were already done for you. Yes. Like, she had already melted the wax, so you didn't have to have a thermometer, like a candy thermometer. Um and she wasn't very specific on, like, she told us where we could get some ingredients, but it was very, um, it was very much geared towards people who just want to go in and make some candles and say, hey, I made candles. Right. And that's it. That's I made three. The and gold, and that's awesome. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't as in-depth as Laura and I kind of were hoping. Were hoping yeah. Because at the 45 minute mark, it was done. Yeah. I would say, I would, so 45 minutes with a 15 minute late start. Yeah. So like, really, I feel like if you went in knowing what sense you wanted to do, you could do the whole class in 15 minutes. Yeah. Um, which is fine. But now I've been shopping for candle making supplies, soy candle making supplies. And, um, the place, the one place that she would give us, cause she's like, oh, I have all these great vendors, but I don't want to bog you down with a list. I want the list. Yeah. Um, we can always ask her when we go pick up the candles. Yes, we can. Um, so Candle Science mm -hmm. is the one place that she told us to um, check out. And I did check them out, and they do have, like, a beginning candle making kit. But when you read the reviews for that, people are like, well, you can get the pieces separately for less money. Oh. Um, so I went to do that, and then shipping was, like, $30. So... I'm, I'm thinking, and that would get me, like, 12 candles, maybe? Yeah. So, you know, it would be, like, $100 to make 12 candles, which is not bad. When you think about it, you spend, like, 25 bucks on an artisan candle, yeah. 20 bucks on an artisan candle, an 8-ounce artisan candle. But maybe so, we have some viewers who also do this yeah. and can recommend some... Some other places to yeah. shop. The problem with the candle science place is they have two warehouses. So they, sh like, if you have an order and half of it's at one place and half of it's another, you're paying for shipping from two places. Yeah. Um, and Amazon had some stuff too. So I don't know. I have to do more research. Well, I, I feel pretty confident that with our viewer base, we have a few people who might have some yeah. insight. Oh, definitely. Um, into the whole thing. For so. sure. Um, I have one more thing that I did this week. Oh, yeah. Uh, my, my husband's brother and his longtime girlfriend, fiance, whatever, got married on Halloween. So this was their first, um, Christmas, Christmas as a married couple. Yeah. And they're very low key and fun and down to earth. Um, but they're also kind of hard to shop for. Because they own a house already. Mm -hmm. They've, They've got all their together stuff. together for a while, right. yeah. Like, they don't really necessarily They're in their, anything. what, late 20s, early 30s. Yeah, late like 20s, early 30s. Work, working for mm -hmm. a while, pretty established. So, um, I've had this on my Pinterest thing forever. Um, I went to, uh, where was it? I want to say Michael's. Or Joanne's, one of the two, and bought a wood burning tool and just did some simple, like I went to one of those discount stores like Home Goods or yeah. um, Tuesday morning or something like that and got a couple of wood pieces. So, like, this is an olive wood 
spatula thing. thing. Yeah. And I just, their names are Sarah and Matt. So I, I did that. And then this was a thing I had seen on Etsy where um, it's like a wedding gift. Yeah. So it's the O'Neills and then the year they got married. So it's That's something cute. that they can keep and use. and. Yeah. I think cutting boards are always yeah an appropriate gift. So, and I have this stuff that is supposed to etch glass that I've never tried. I, I bought it, but I haven't actually tried it yet. But I bought a couple of um, dishes to try it out on as well mm -hmm. um, that I'm going to do this week as, and try that out. So, oh. um, I think that's it. Okay. The, oh, Patreon. Yeah. Um, so. And then I have your Christmas present. Mm -hmm. I haven't forgotten. <laughs> It goes with your other one. I gave her two items yesterday because I thought, like, yeah. oh, you know, we didn't get to it. But I'm still waiting on, like, this week's Christmas present. So you get the leftover items that came today. Oh, look, you had them. Yeah. So yesterday's was pig post-its, which are a thing. They are. Pigs are one of my favorite um, animals. And I have pig paper clips. And then your little pigs came today. Oh, little, <laughs> little pig flags for flagging pages in a book. And then your something. bookmark that I bought you also came today. <laughs> oh, it's Ludo! <laughs> it's Ludo, friend! That's cool, thank you. It's got a magnet on the inside. Oh, that's awesome. I've got another one. I got um, the nieces. Uh, they have Disney Princess ones oh. and packs of five, so I got the... And they have, like, Harry Potter ones. And they have Game of Thrones, which I also almost got for you. And then I was like, this is ridiculous. How yeah. many bookmarks does one person who's a grown adult need? Who mostly reads digitally. Yeah. Um, thank or you. Or audio. So I got you, Ludo. All right. That's it for Christmas presents for this week. Um, so Patreon for the folks who donated in November. Also, for anyone who donates to Patreon, A, thank you. Mm -hmm. It is genuinely appreciated. Um, it helps us do things like take random candle making classes <laughs> or, you know, post out um, gifts or uh, prizes in the mail or buy items from a new vendor to share with you. Or, or update our software. Yeah. Yeah. Or every hardware. month we pay to not only do Podcast Garden. But host websites. Well, Podcast Garden is an annual fee, but yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And also Adobe yeah. to convert. Yeah. So all so, those things add up pretty quickly. It is genuinely appreciated. So that's number one thing. Number two thing is you might have gotten an email about Patreon changing the way that it does fees. Um, or rather, the, the way that it distributes the fees that it collects. Um, it actually got so much backlash that they changed it. They reversed it back to the original so way. It's going to be the way because we were on break last week when all this crap was right. happening. So <laughs> we missed it all. Yeah. <laughs> so it was going to change. Like the 8th of December or something. Yeah. It was going to change like how much went to the actual artist, you know, us versus how much Patreon kept versus how it was distributed so anyhow they changed it back so it's back to the way it originally was nothing has changed um we did get a couple emails about it so from um, patreon or from, from from viewers oh, okay. yeah who were gonna switch and just do like paypal contributions oh. which is perfectly fine yeah, as that's well fine too. um but you can stick with patreon if you want because it's not changing um they did not like um, user test that before they sent that out. Well, and they sent it out, and then they're like, this is changing in three days. Yeah. So, um, my brother does a lot of Patreons, and he was saying, like, people who depend on smaller donations mm -hmm. were losing, like, um, I guess it was, like, video game people, or yeah. comic book artists. Well, Ma Michael said the same thing, because he donate or he uh, supports several podcasts, you know, on, like, two bucks a month, or, yeah. you know, three bucks a month, or something. But those little bits add up. Yeah. And, yeah, that can be detrimental. So, for our November supporters, for the yarn prize, what we're going to do is we're going to offer the last skein of our SSK 2017 colorway. This is a self-striping, and it's at sixes and sevens. And this is a fishnets colorway. This is 80% um, superwash merino, 20% nylon. Um, 
and this is her strong heart base. I've knit a couple pairs out of this particular base of yarn, it's not a two this ply, color one. Right? Yeah, and it holds mm -hmm. up really well. So um, we always buy extra of yarn and fiber for SSK, and we usually end up coming home with some of it. Uh, we actually had to set this aside so that we <laughs> didn't sell it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this will go to the winner for the any the people who donate two fifty per week. So that is going to be. Can you pull up a random number generator? I can. Between numbers. I feel like I should just download that app at this point. Sixty-five. Okay, hold on. And one twenty-two. When I start typing in random, Ravelry comes up. <laughs> Sixty-five and one twenty-two. Correct. It's going to be 98. Okay, let's go. 98 is Teresa R. Roberts. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> Teresa, if you want something else, because she was at She was SSK. at SSK, and she doesn't actually knit socks. <laughs> um, so we can, uh, let me. We can make something else happen. Yeah. Let me just bold that. So Teresa, just text me or something and let me know. I'm... Whoop, we can do like um, another, a different kind of yarn, or I can spin something for you. Just let me know. And then Laura is working on the Patreon yeah. for November, so it'll I be done see by next week. <laughs> it should be done by tonight um, if I get my Beast Master mode on. <laughs> so that is going to be for the people in our $3 per episode donation, and that is between <clears throat> numbers 17 and... Come on. 63. So between 17 and 63. 54. 54 is Tish Godzilla. Oh, excellent. Tish Lorenza, Miss Godzilla. Um, she's in California, right? She's been to SSK a couple times. She yep. has. She went to SKP too. Lakewood, California. Yep. Excellent. So, Tish, we have your address, and Laura, we're watching. <laughs> and Laura will send this um, out to you once it gets done. So yep. Probably the first uh, part of January. I'll probably wait till after Christmas yeah. so that it doesn't get lost in the When mail. it's less insane at the post office. Yeah. Well, there's that, too. Um, and then, Teresa, just text me and let me know. Um, I could always knit a pair of socks for you out of this. <laughs> um, Craziness. Now yeah. Leslie's just getting crazy, Unless you have big feet, and then <laughs> maybe not. I don't know. Um, I'll work it out. I can always go through my bucket. stash and find purple yarn as well. I think she probably owns something in every shade of purple that has mm. ever existed. Could be. That would be my guess. Um, Trees only knits with purple. Yes. But that's it. That's all we got. Do you Truth. have anything else? No. 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 <laughs> um, next week, our episode will be delayed because Laura is going to visit her parents. Plus Christmas. Um, yeah. So it'll be the week of Christmas at some point. Yeah. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, something. I'm like driving that. back Tuesday. So. And my um, freaking dishwasher is now being delivered that Wednesday. Yeah. So I have to be back by Wednesday. It's non-negotiable because they can come at 8 a.m. And I know you're not. You're working. And I know yeah, Michael's not going to go over there at yeah. 8 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> that is unlikely. But they're like, we can either deliver between 8 and noon or after 4 p.m. And I was like, we have netting at my house starting at On 6 Wednesday, p.m. Yeah. Wednesday nights. And I was like, um, so I guess it's the morning. Hopefully I'll be back by then. If not, I'll call them. Because really, this is not my, it was supposed to arrive tomorrow. tomorrow. And the guy called me. I called them and I was like, hey, I haven't heard from y'all. And the guy's like, well, I'll get back to you. And then he called three hours later and was like, yeah, it's not going to get here in time. It's on a truck. Cool beans. And then he was like, well, we can deliver it the Saturday before Christmas. And I was like, or not. Mm. Anyway. Lowe's. Killing me. Okay. It well, is what it is. If you celebrate Christmas, then we wish you a happy Christmas. Happy Hanukkah, because that's going on right now, I believe. Yeah. Um, happy holidays in general. Yes. No matter what you celebrate or don't celebrate, we hope that you have a lovely week. And we will talk to you again next week. <laughs> Bye, y'all.